Hi, my name is Alex, and in this episode of Magic Miso Minis, I'm going to be trying a new painting style where I have to paint metals without using any metallic paints. A painting style very cleverly called non-metallic metals. So, to start off with, I take all the different parts that I want to paint in metal, and I give them a base coat of a lightish mid-tone gray. And from there, I try to figure out where I want to put my highlights. So I just take a white paint and add little dots and lines where I want the highest highlights to be. The way that I determined where these highlights would go was by putting it underneath a lamp and kind of seeing where the highlights were from the lamp, from the angle that I was looking at the miniature. And from what I understood of the few videos that I was watching, you kind of want to take a couple different angles and paint on all the highlights for the several angles that you've kind of chosen. And people will naturally be drawn to looking at the miniature from those angles because of the way you've done the highlights, assuming you've done that correctly. And so we'll see if I've done it correctly by the end of this video. And as you can see me doing here, I also do the same with the darks. So adding in little splotches of black to tell me where I want the blackest points on the armor to be. Another thing that I kind of got from just looking at different NMM pieces as well as some of the videos that I was watching is that you really need to focus in on the bright, bright highlights and the very, very dark darks. Particularly when you're doing kind of like chrome armor or something that's super, super shiny. And for simplicity's sake, that's what I'm going to be doing in this video. Now that we have all of the highlights chosen, here you can see I'm fo mainly focusing on the right pauldron. I can move on to do some blending. And for this, I'm doing a mixture of wet blending as well as some glazing, taking watered down paint and spreading that over and kind of just doing a lot of pushing and pulling until the gradient is nice and smooth. In this video, I'm namely going to be focusing on this pauldron that I'm making here, as well as the accent that I'm gonna do a little bit later. And one of the things that's kind of tricky with doing this is especially with the pauldron, it's a very weird shape. So like the actual edges of the pauldron, I feel like are significantly easier to do as the actual like round curved part of the pauldron. Because as you can see, it's not quite a standard shape. It's kind of like half of a sphere on top of half of a cylinder, which makes the highlight a little bit difficult to find, especially when you're trying to make it super, super bright and evident. I will say one part that I'm really, really proud of in this miniature is this little part that I'm working on here where I'm adding a little bit of edge highlighting to it right now. I don't know if you guys also get that where you just have one part of your miniature that you're just like, yes, this, this part, this is exactly what it's supposed to look like. But for me, it was this corner of the pauldron. I then go around the rest of the armor doing the same thing over and over again, just trying to find where the highlight is supposed to be and then making it as bright as possible, while also going in with dark blacks and grays to make the shadows very, very dark. Going in with a watered down black to get some of the recesses really dark, because that contrast is what really makes it look like a shiny piece of metal. And then once I feel like everything is where it's going to be, or I've just kind of decided that that's where it's going to be for now because I've spent a lot of time painting this mini, I add a little bit of edge highlighting over the entirety of the pauldron. After that, I do the other pauldron and then move on to work on the axe head. And one thing that I was very specific to do that I didn't do for the pauldrons was I wanted to make sure I grabbed some reference for it. So I follow the same process, but have a slightly better idea of where the highlights should be based off of the references that I'm using. Adding a really bright highlight to the very edge of the axe blade because it kinda has a different shape than the rest of the axe blade that's a little bit more uniform, which is something I noticed looking at the reference of axes done with the NMM style of painting. For the other little highlight that you can see me working on here, I ended up focusing on using wet blending rather than glazing because when I was glazing it, it diffused the highlight that I was making so much that you really couldn't see it. Once the highlights on the axe blade were where I wanted them to be, I add a highlight around the entirety of the axe blade. I found that these edge highlights are kind of the finishing touch really to a lot of this NMM stuff based off of what I did on the axe and the pauldron. 
Once I added those edge highlights, it actually started to look like what it was supposed to. Moving on, I go to the flat part of the axe head, and I start by adding a dark black right up against the highlight I had made for the axe blade. And then I blend that out so that the back of the flat of the axe head is going to be brighter than the front. At this point, I wasn't entirely sure if I needed to add any more contrast in the flat of the axe head. So I went around and did my edge highlight, but partway through I was realizing that it did need something more. So, as you can see me doing here, I add a little bit of watered-down white paint into this top corner of the axe head, and then, of course, move on to blend that down so that there's a little bit of variation on this part of the axe head. With that finished, I move on to add a little bit more edge highlighting to the bottom of the axe blade. To be honest, I wasn't entirely sure what to do with the little pattern that I had made on top of the axe head. It already had a little bit of a gradient from what I was doing on the flat of the axe head. So to start off with, I just did a edge highlight over the entire thing. But I decided to add a little bit of white onto the point of the design I had put on it, so that it wasn't just following the exact same thing that the flat of the axe head was doing. But after that, I did a little bit more work on the axe head and did the other side of it, and decided to call it a day for my first attempt at non-metallic metals. I'm really happy with how this project turned out, especially for this being my first try at painting non-metallic metals. Of course, it doesn't quite look right from every angle, but I think as far as a first try, I'm certainly proud of myself. But anyways, thank you so much for watching that video. If you enjoyed it, please hit the like button, subscribe, and hit the bell to get notified whenever I release new videos. Also, don't forget to check out my Patreon where you can support my channel. If you have any suggestions for future videos or questions about miniature sculpting, leave them in the comments below. But once again, thank you so much for watching this video, and I'll see you guys in the next one.